Welcome to the Engineering Update. I'm Technical Editor Jason Lumberg, and in this week's episode, an interstellar Noah's Ark, self-driving cars, and going 200 miles per hour in electric dragster. Here at ECN, we love us some blue skies research with all the sexy and far out applications that may not come to fruition for decades or in our lifetimes. But this project takes the pie from the sky and attaches a jetpack, a lightsaber, and a flying car from the Jetsons. Far out doesn't even begin to describe it. UK scientists are busy developing a self-sustaining bioorganic spacecraft described as an interstellar Noah's Ark. And while this Ark won't carry two of every animal and none of the scientists involved in the project will live to see it completed, Project Persephone, as they're calling it, could ensure the survival of humanity in the event of nuclear or biological warfare or if climate change or some other global disaster makes the Earth uninhabitable. The team, which includes scientists from the UK, Italy, the Netherlands, and USA, is investigating a way to create what they call living technologies, along with a fully developed ecosystem that will be capable of generating light, air, water, food, and gravity. Obviously, this project, such as it is, is in the very early planning stages, incorporating numerous technologies that don't exist yet. But the idea is to incorporate organic matter like algae and artificial soil and use solar power to create biofuel and sustainable food. We recently discussed how in the near future, astronauts can recycle their own urine to help power a trip to Mars, but this interstellar Noah's Ark is far beyond that. It would utilize blue sky technologies for a pioneering voyage that's to be self-sustaining for an unspecified period of time, presumably until humanity finds a new home, or possibly beyond. It's five-year mission to explore strange new worlds. Self-driving cars may seem like a thing in the future, but in reality, a few companies are hard at work with prototypes already hitting the road. The king of self-driving cars is obviously Google, with their vehicles logging in almost 700,000 developmental miles in their fleet, which includes six Toyota Priuses, an Audi TT, and three Lexuses. The cars, which first hit the road in Nevada in 2012, represent a potential future for transportation, and the engineers have been focused on making sure the cars are safe enough to operate side by side with traditional cars. One concern that critics have is that the cars won't be able to adapt like a human being would when it comes to other cars or pedestrians. So far, they've only reported two accidents involving the cars. One near Google headquarters, which was being manually operated by the driver at the time of the crash, and a second car that was rear-ended at a red light and also was not at fault. But that doesn't mean Google engineers aren't working on increasing the intelligence of the cars. Recently, they released a video that showcases how the car interacts with the environment around it. This includes things like construction, complicated traffic patterns, and even recognizing cyclists' hand signals. The video shows the car is capable of recognizing different changes in environment and terrain, including roadblocks, train tracks, and other obstacles. For the safety of those on bikes, the car is capable of recognizing hand signals, like when the driver is planning on moving out into the center of the lane. According to the video, the car is really able to comprehend the natural choreography of the roadways. The driverless cars are actually proving to be safer than cars with drivers, but they still have a ways to go before they hit the road in any mass numbers. Race fans may be familiar with Big Daddy Don Garlitz, the so-called father of drag racing, who 50 years ago made history. On August 2, 1964, Garlitz broke the elusive 200 miles per hour barrier in a dragster. And now, at 82 years old, when most of his peers are playing shuffleboard in Boca Raton, the legendary showman will break the 200 mile per hour barrier again, this time in an electric dragster. The Swamp Rat 37 features a lithium polymer battery with four packs split between each side of the car and the packs hold a total of 1200 lithium polymer cells, producing a maximum of 420 volts and a current of 3600 amps. And while the Swamp Rat's 2000 horsepower is a bit of a drag, see what I did there? Compared to the average gas powered dragster which hits 8000 horsepower, the Swamp Rat 37 is impressive for what it is. Dennis Berube set the existing record for an electric dragster quarter mile run going 159.85 miles per hour in 2007 and at the helm of the Swamp Rat 37, Don Garlitz is aiming to break the current mark by more than 41 miles per hour. In fact, by the time you see this, Garlitz may have already achieved this monumental feat. That's it for this edition of the Engineering Update. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn and see past episodes on ecnmag.com. The ECN channel, I'm Jason Lundberg and thanks for watching.